Hey guys, Casey Madrid, and I am continuing with my true story. It's part three. <clears throat> now I'm going to talk about a few, some things, not graphically, but they are uh, parental guidance subjects. As I can, uh, I finished my story between ages five and ten. I didn't really finish it. Like I told you, <clears throat> I, I can't remember a lot of things because there's so much trauma that I. Uh, my mind blocked it out and the Lord has shown me things through the years that I could deal with as an adult but I still do not remember so many details and you know maybe I can pray and ask him but right now I'm just so focused on now and helping people using my story my life my experience to help people that I just don't I don't care about knowing all the details what I know is that I was set free by the love of God the power of Jesus I was set free from so many things. So <clears throat> my parents being drinkers, drug addicts, um, it would leave me with a lot of different people. So I think I was eight. I may have told this in the last one. Oh, not too sure. But my mom got with my stepdad. And they began drinking and became intravenous drug users. Um, but even before then, I would be left with all kinds of people. And I don't know how many were good and bad, but I know that I was abused sexually at a very early age. And I can't remember all the details, but with babysitters, be careful who you leave your kids with, okay? It was convenient for my parents to just leave me with, and you know what, <laughs> when you're innocent, Sometimes you just can't imagine that anybody would want to hurt somebody else. You're like, oh, what could happen? You know, and it's really sad that there are people that they've been abused and it's a it becomes a vicious cycle. So be careful. Ask the Holy Spirit. Don't live in fear, but ask the Holy Spirit and he will show you who you can trust. You'll know. He's given us that gut feeling. Um, I had to develop a strong gut feeling at an early age to discern whether people were good or bad and it was it was a gift that God gave and he freely gives so he will give you discernment so <clears throat> my babysitters would just do inappropriate things one particular I remember I was like eight years old I was just a little kid and the teenager invited one of her boy friends over I don't know if it, they were dating but it was a boy and a friend and he tried to beg me for over an hour eight years old to sleep with him and I was like I've never done it I never I mean I stood my ground but I mean ow my little brother was upstairs sleeping apparently and I just remember beg him begging me begging me begging me and thank god he wasn't he didn't force himself on me but that just created a distrust for men within me <clears throat> and then with the whole issue with my uh, my biological father physically abusing my mom, I just started to lean away from men. Now, I always thought they were attractive. It's like, oh, but I was used to being hurt by them. I remember, I think it was when I was 11, and I just remember the boys just making fun of me. I was a little chubby. I had started gaining weight. I think like a nine or 10, just from emotional issues, you know, food was my comfort. It was consolation for all of the difficult times. So I re just remember boys being mean, not all of them, but, and then, you know, being eight years old and having that one just begging me. And then as I got older, there's just so many scenarios of them, different men just being inappropriate with me. And I started to gravitate toward being attracted to, and it wasn't even like attracted to women, it was just mainly my best friend when I, I think I turned 15. So that's later on in the story, but I just want you to know how it got to that point where I started having identity issues. And it wasn't so much an identity issue as it was a distrust for men and, <clears throat> and the trauma when you have trauma in your life with the physical abuse, seeing my mom and then uh, 
all of the different babysitters. It just was, it was traumatizing to my innocent brain. And that trauma can invite, invite demonic influences into your life. And demonic influences love to pervert what God created. God made man and woman <clears throat> to be, to fulfill each other and to have children. And it's a very beautiful thing. But what Satan does is he likes to come in and, and twist and corrupt what God has made. And so I, I started having nightmares also. I, I don't know who let me, but someone let me watch some scary movies. And so I started having this abnormal fear of clowns. I told you I had the fear of spiders too, but then I had fear of clowns. And you know, you know the movies with clowns and those are freaky. <clears throat> so I started having these nightmares and I was just afraid. And then I was not comfortable with men. When I went to school, I had to put on this face that everything was fine. I couldn't uh, let anyone know that, you know, my parents were always drunk, usually, or on drugs. And we began to move. We would get kicked out of houses over and over and over. So I would just start having a really unstable life around a... It, and it, was, it wasn't was that stable before either, but when I was with my mom, <clears throat> we had a few places and she would always work. Man, she worked her booty off to take care of me and my little brother. <clears throat> and then when she met my stepdad, he worked, but then they would go on these binges. They would both work, they'd go on these drug bin binges and then they would lose their jobs. We would lose our houses. And so I just became like more and more unstable internally like externally I put on the facade like at school everything's okay I just lived life did whatever <clears throat> I, but I was having nightmares I was just very afraid and I started sleepwalking and I would get in trouble like my parents would say you were spying on us and, and I, I would not remember anything I'd be like what I have no idea so I just started having a lot of emotional issues that I repressed. I held it all in. I didn't have anyone to talk to. And I knew at school that my life was different than everyone else's. And I just couldn't. What was I going to do? You know, tell people. Then you get CPS involved. And it's just crazy. And CPS, maybe it can help in some situations. But um, in other situations, you know, it can and tear families apart. So through all of this, I want you to remember that my mom, I know that my mom loved me, even though she was so messed up and she was seeking and doing drugs and drinking, like I could just see that she was tormented and she wanted a way out, but she didn't know how to get out. And I knew, I, I knew that my mom loved me. I knew that she loved me and my little brothers. Um, her and my stepdad ended up having another child, which is my baby brother whom I adore. I adore my brothers. I just, I love family. <clears throat> but it took, it took several years. Man, and God, God was seeking me out. He was seeking me out all the time. So I'll tell you about that in my next, my next video about all of the different things that, where God was putting people in my life to plant seeds of hope. Um, but those formative years are so important. So be careful about your children, who they are with when they're alone, because there's just so much corruption in this world and the Holy Spirit will lead you and teach you. You don't need to be afraid, but make sure that you know the people that are taking care of your family. All right, I'm going to end with that and then I'm going to come out with uh, part four soon because I want you to know how it all culminated and where, you know, the trauma and all of the abuse and the demons just starting to, to torment my mind and how I, I let them in because I was hurt and broken. And so I'm going to teach you some of these things so that you do not make the same mistakes. Or if you are in a situation, you can get free. Or if you know somebody who's in a situation where they need freedom, you can pray for them and get results. All right. Peace out.